everyone. This is Jan Kabili with another episode of The Fix, the podcast that's all about post-processing. We talk about Photoshop and Lightroom, and this week, Google Photos. I have a couple of very special guests for you this week. These are the big guns at Google when it comes to photography. My guests are John Knack, who is the product manager for all of digital photography at Google, and Aravind Krishnaswamy, and he is an engineering manager for Google Photos. Hi, John. Hi, Aravind. Hey, Jan. Hello. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for taking time out of your busy days, and I know you are really busy. Sure, and let me just clarify, much much as Arvin uh, did, so there are actually several PMs uh, working on photos, so I've been uh, privileged to be one of them, but I don't want to take too much credit. Well, thank you. You're very modest. <laughs> sure. Now, John and Arvin have been so kind to agree to give us a little peek behind the curtain and uh, show us some great things you can do with Google Photos. But before we do, let's just get to know them a little bit more. So, John, let's start with you. Um, I had the great privilege to uh, meet you back when you were working at Adobe. And I know that there you were the principal product manager for, drumroll, <laughs> Photoshop, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I got to work on Photoshop for almost 10 years um, when you add it all up, which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, so I, I spent almost 14 years at Adobe. Um, I've always said I'm just a simple, unfrozen caveman web designer. Uh, I came there just because I was using tools to build websites and make animations, and um, I would get frustrated, and I would you know, call up Adobe people and, and ball them out. And finally, they were like, okay, well, if you're so smart, why don't you come and try to do it? Uh, so I, I did that for many years and um, worked on things like Camera Raw, uh, Bridge, Smart Objects, um, you know, getting Photoshop out as a public beta. And I always enjoyed um, you know, meeting with as many customers as possible, which is why I maintained a blog for a long time. So um, yeah, it was a really fun ride. And uh, about a year and a half ago, um, I followed Arvind and uh, some other um, folks I knew from Adobe uh, over to Google to uh, work on photos. Wow, that must have been a huge move for you after so many years at Adobe. Must have felt like uh, moving your home. Yeah, it was definitely an interesting switch. And um, you know, like I told my Adobe friends, it it, it was really just um, I wanted to challenge myself to uh, not only see how things work in a different place, but also to um, you know to try to do something at a, at a really huge scale. Uh, one of the you know the fun things at Adobe is you really get to focus on. Um, a very specific audience and really, you know, make very serious users happy. Um, and I felt like, uh, you know, coming to Google, can you do that at, at an incredibly large scale? Um, so it's, to me, less of a competitive thing and just more of, um, you know, can we, uh, can we do something complimentary that brings a lot of goodness to a lot of people? Well, that's great, and I think it is it is just wonderful that you're able to bring your talents to so many more people now, so that they can all profit from what you've learned and um, and the way that you interact with customers. You mentioned that, and I think that's really important, particularly at Google, where there is such a great uh, photography community that kind of grew up organically, um, you know, just by people getting involved with Google Plus. Yeah, there is an amazing community, right, and. Um you know, it's, it's been really exciting now to roll out these new tools and uh, to have the benefit of learning from what so many of those people need and want. Well, before you tell us more about Google Photos, I'd like to meet Arvind. Arvind, tell us a bit about your background and how it led you to the amazing job you have at Google Photos. Yes, uh, so, so my background kind of starts somewhere around 12 years ago, and uh, I was working at a, at a different company. I was building software for the video industry. And I started uh, photographing. I picked up a camera and uh, started taking pictures, started getting serious about it, and uh, found out there was this uh, piece of software called Photoshop and started using it. And uh, before you know, I decided I was going to go work on it. I was going to go actually uh, start building stuff in Photoshop. So about 10 years ago, I uh, moved down here. I moved down to San Jose and joined the Photoshop team and met John and started working with John. Uh, did that for a couple of years and then uh, went off and joined a new research group. Adobe was getting into research and they were going to build a bunch of new technology uh, for for Photoshop and After Effects and all these other products. So I went off and did that. Um, ended up building some stuff for Photoshop, for Camera Raw, uh, for After Effects, all of these products. And then uh, about three years ago, 
uh, I decided I wanted to go try to do something different. So I came to Google and uh, started working on Google Plus Photos. Google Plus had just kind of come out and it had this this big traction among the uh, photography community. I thought it'd be a lot of fun to to come here and uh, and work on that and. You know, within a couple months of when I started, uh, we acquired Nick, uh, Nick Software, and that was really exciting. And uh, it was great to be a part of all of the the really cool photography stuff that we've done. And you're a photographer in your own right, aren't you? Uh, I am. Yeah, I've been uh, doing photography fairly seriously for about 10, 11 years now. What yeah, kind of I'm... things do you shoot? Uh, I'm primarily a wildlife photographer. Um, I'm kind of a combination wildlife and landscape photographer. Uh, I really like doing uh, landscapes that have an element of wildlife in it. So you capture, you know, the natural environment that uh, um, that an animal is in. Um, that's what I've been doing. And that's you cool. also have a, a couple of small human wildlife. Uh, I I do. I, I mean, I guess uh, yeah. I guess you could say I'm I'm now a small human wildlife photographer as well. So a lot of my uh, uh, a lot of my photos, a lot of my postings on social media are of my kids, and uh, so I chase them around with my cameras um, as much as I chase around uh, lions and cheetahs. Hey, I would cool. just, oh, sorry, John, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Jan. No, I was going to say pro tip, uh, something I learned, because Aravind uh, and his wife had kids right around the same, same time uh, my wife and I did. Uh, don't look at his uh, photography uh, if you also take pictures of your kids, because you're going to feel kind of bad afterwards. Uh, at least I do. So he, he takes really good stuff. I think you'll see some of it um, when we demo in a little bit. But um, yeah, it, it, that's to me one of the really fun things uh, about working here and, and working on photography is that um, you get to uh, collaborate with a lot of people who are n not only great um, you know, computer scientists, but uh, who are really passionate about the craft of uh, photography. So that, that really helps inform um, what we build. I think that's true. And also, you know, you mentioned taking family photos and how important it is to both of you guys. Don't you think that that's some, something that's really important to your audience as well? Absolutely. Yeah. As Ervin, maybe I should let him say it, but, you know, we were, we were just talking earlier and um, I think there's, even if you're, you know, a, a pro photographer, really serious, there's nobody who doesn't like, um, you know, the, the peace of mind of having everything backed up, um, having their photos brought to life, um, sometimes automatically and really serendipitous ways, um, and then being able to share. So, you know, even if you have really high-end needs, I think those those needs are really universal. So, John, tell us a little bit about Google Photos, the program, and what's involved in it. Is it just the Google Photos app, or is it more? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, about uh, six weeks ago uh, at Google I.O., we introduced Google Photos. So, um, previously, as Arvind said, um, some of the functionality was available inside of Google+. Plus. But um, we heard from people who said, you know, I really like having this social network, and I really like having, um, you know, private uh, secure backup, but I want those to be separate things. And so now um, I, we think both, both parts of that equation will be stronger by, um, by being separate things. Um, uh, also, a really important part of just the Google Photos ecosystem is Nick software. So uh, anybody who's used Photoshop, uh, is probably familiar with you know, silver effects, color effects, the VESA, HDR um, effects. Uh, so the, they're a company in Germany that uh, Google acquired. Um, I've always been a, a passionate user of Snapseed, uh, which is a really great mobile photography tool. Um, and as we'll talk about in a little bit, um, some of that technology uh, is available very, very easily from Google Photos. So um, you know, we, we think that having those guys as part of our team uh, helps us develop some really, really impressive high-end functionality, but then also bring that to a really mass audience um, in a simpler form. So is there anything that's that you haven't mentioned? There's Google Photos app um, for desktop and web and, and mobile, and then there is uh, the Nick collection, the Google Nick collection of kind of high-end, uh, what, do you, what do you call those, plugins? Yeah, yeah. So um, basically, they, uh, whereas uh, Nick, when they were a separate company, sold each app uh, separately. Now from Google you can get the entire Nick collection, it's one price, um, and those work great in Photoshop and Lightroom and Aperture. That's a great deal by the way. I think the whole thing used to be about $150, something like that. It is now. Ervin, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was more on the order of like $500 for right. the Google acquisition. Yep, it was $499 and um, we slashed the price. Yeah, and you know that's holistically uh, to me, one of the really neat things about Google is um, they really try to democratize access to technology. 
And so there's a good example of it. And, and Google Photos itself is uh, completely free to use. So um, really, there's no impediment to people preserving their lifetime of memories. And then there's also Snapseed, the great mobile app. And you said you love that. What do you love about it? Well, <clears throat> my favorite thing is, and actually, I'll, I'll tell you, back when I was at Adobe, I wanted Adobe to buy Nick. And this was like, gosh, I don't know, it must be like 13 years ago, right when we started working on Lightroom. And um, I was just afraid, you know, they would fall into Apple's hands because uh, they have this um, really unique uh, U-point technology where you put a little pin wherever you want on your image, and then it's smart enough to segment the image. So let's say you put it on the sky, and you want to make the sky more saturated or you put it on somebody's cheek and you want to make her face just a little brighter um, without having to uh, worry about like traditional masks and selections you can just put that pin there and then slide the parameters contextually and so I always you know for a long time before I actually Snapseed shipped I thought man you know if and when Nick ever brings that stuff to mobile that's going to be amazing and uh, so I've been a fan of it for years uh, just for the way it lets me um, correct localized parts of images. So as we'll, we'll show in a bit, um, we've got a great editor built right into Google Photos. It's super streamlined, super easy to use, really powerful. Um, but there are those times when you want more power. And for that, um, Snapseed is really, really, really useful. So I, you know, I, I spent many years at Adobe saying, look at these guys. You know, that's, that's pretty cool what they're doing over there. And uh, eventually I thought, maybe I, should, uh, maybe I should work with those guys. So here I am. Good for you. <laughs> Every, all your dreams have come true. Huh? Yeah, we're working on it. Cool. Okay, so if there, if you could say sort of what is the overall approach of Google Photos, you know, what's your mission? Who's your audience? What what's your vision? Uh, Arvin, you want to take this? Uh, yeah, let me uh, let me jump in. Um, so as John said before, uh, you know, we built a great photos experience inside of Google Plus, um, but a social network isn't where you want to store all of your private personal photos and videos, and so. With Google Photos, what we wanted to do was more than just graduate photos out of Google+. Uh, with Google Photos, we built an entirely new experience from the ground up. And really, we thought of it centered around three big ideas. First, be the home for all of your photos and videos. That's a single place to safely keep your lifetime of memories available on any device, uh, whether it's your phone, your tablet, your computer. Second, uh, we wanted to, to have all of your moments organized and brought to life. And this is basically an app that takes the work out of photos and lets you focus on making memories rather than managing them. And this is where things like search to be able to organize and find your photos come in. This is where all of the creations, the things where we automatically make animations and make collages and make great montage movies and stories all come in. And then the third um, aspect where if you know having all of your photos safely backed up and making all of these things and organizing them isn't enough if you can't share those photos to the people that matter. And so we really wanted to build a better way to share and save what matters. And sharing really should be simple and reliable. You know, our um, one of our uh, product managers, you know, Dave Lieb, likes to say that you know we're kind of living in 2015 and we've got all this wonderful technology. There's cars that drive themselves. Um, you know, there's uh, uh, we've solved like all of these fundamental problems we've solved, but like if John and I go for a hike together with a couple of other friends, all of us being able to pool and share our photos is still kind of an unsolved problem. It's still really hard. And that's one of the things that we really set out to go and, and solve and try to make easy. So essentially Google Photos is all three of these things, the home for all your photos, all those moments organized and brought to life, and a better way to share and save what matters. That's all really important. And I also think, it, you kind of touched on this, that making it simple for people is very important. And it is a complicated problem. There are just a lot of different um, interfaces that you have to solve, from the small screen on the phone to the big monitor to the web. Um, how, what, what's your approach to that? Uh, the approach to it is um, we have a world-class set of designers who go back to thinking about the core workflows. What are the fundamental problems that people face as they're dealing with their photos and then how we go about solving it. And a lot of times you can't just figure these things out by going and locking yourself in a room and just coming up with the right solution. So our designers, our um, user um, 
researchers, they go off, they do studies with people, they test designs with people, we try to find out you know, what works and what doesn't work, and what works on one platform may not work on another platform, or what works on one form factor may not work on the other form factor. So there's really no uh, magic bullet here, it's just a lot of really hard work, it's a lot of user testing, and it's a lot of, uh, it's a learning process, even for us. Yeah, and I would just interject and, and to build on that, um, you know, Jan, you were talking about um, simplicity, and you know, people have. It, it, there's always that you know the famous Henry Ford quote: "If I ask my customers what they wanted, they would say a faster horse." And so when we think about things like organization, we see, um, you know, it's like in the future we will all be fit and you know financially solvent and handsome and you know it's like. But then you ask people like, "Well, when's the last time uh, you organized uh, a bunch of your photos?" Like, "Oh yeah, I, I should get on that." And you know, sometimes the answer isn't just, we'll come up with like, a better way to, to create folders and things, although you need to be able to do that. Um, sometimes you need something fundamentally different and better, and that's where using Google technology like search uh, and image um, analysis and understanding is really important. And so you know, it's trying to um, take people away from the burden of um, doing all that housekeeping and let them really focus on uh, just enjoying and expressing the moments. Yeah, I love that part of Google Photos. It's really great. Well, you know, um, I've been doing some videos about Google Photos for lynda.com and some other places, and um, I, I found in the course of that, I kept hitting a couple of walls and came up with a couple of questions. So I'm going to save those, though, and put them to you guys later after you give us a little introduction to Google Photos. Who wants to do that? John, Evan? Yeah. Share your screen. I'm happy to do it, sure. And uh, you now you keep us in suspense about what these mm. questions are. It's <laughs> It's like, how do you keep an audience in suspense? Ask me tomorrow. So um, here is just the random hodgepodge of my own personal photos. So uh, don't hold it against me if it's too too weird. But this is just me living my life, um, finding pictures of wizard vans and taking pictures of my kids. And um, but I think it'll it'll give you a decent demo. Um, I think it's going to be a little hard to show you the mobile app um, uh, via a desktop Hangout. But um, by all means, if if uh, you haven't tried it, let me just bring up the page. So if you go to photos.google.com slash apps, just A-P-P-S, uh, it gives you not only a quick shortcut to Android and iOS download, uh, but there's also desktop uploaders that we make for Mac and Windows. And what's really nice with this is you just download the app, you turn it on, and that's it. So for me, for example, like when I, um, I came back from vacation, I've got my SD card full of raw files, my entire workflow is literally plug in the SD card. That's it. And from that point onward, um, the desktop uploader notices it, uh, takes all my stuff, it backs it up, and then, you know, as soon as bandwidth permits, everything's available not only on the web at photos.google.com, but also um, on Android and uh, on my iPhone and tablet. Um, so uh, that's a really just a, a very simple uh, shortcut. But if I back up, um, you can see photos.google.com. Um, hopefully folks have, have seen uh, some of these things. Uh, as you mentioned, one of the big standout features is search. So if I just um, click up in the top, I immediately get uh, all these face clusters. So uh, these try to sort by uh, frequency of people appearing. And so, uh, for example, my kids, my wife, my folks, um, as you'd, you'd kind of imagine, appear in there. Uh, just last week, we were in Legoland. And so if I type in Lego, now again, I haven't done any tagging manually at all on these images. And so, um, I'm always kind of delighted and amazed when, you know, it notices, like, hey, here's some photos from your iPhone, here's from your SLR um, that are taken uh, of some Legos. Um, one of my sons uh, is really into lions. Um, we also, we were at the um, uh, safari park in San Diego. So you can see not only um, uh, this lion, uh, lioness that we shot last week, but if I go all the way back in time, um, you know, here's him. And this is the one that, this is where I start to freak out a little, even though I work here. It's like, it actually classified this as a lion, uh, which is, I, I think, pretty amazing. Uh, although it's funny, I showed my 11-year-old nephew some of these things, and he was like, well, yeah, you know, kids, kids take this stuff for granted. It's like, well, of course it's a lion. Like, I see a lion. But uh, those of us who, who know how hard some of this can be, um, I think, are, are sort of amazed. Uh, one other thing I'll point out is... Um, if you take a burst of photos uh, that are visually similar, uh, Google will automatically create things uh, out of those. So here, 
you can see, um, you know, this was long before I used Google Photos or, or worked here. Uh, this was our kids a couple years ago at Christmas, and I happened to take a burst of shots, and it automatically made this little GIF animation for me. And so uh, when uh, Photos makes you things, um, if I back up just a couple levels, you'll see we've got, there's actually a little assistant area. And in there, um, it will um, try to surface really interesting content that it made. So for example, various, um, you know, various uh, collages, animations, movies, um, etc. And in fact, if I go back into search and I scroll down, just a couple um, semi-nerdy uh, power user tips, uh, if you want to th see things uh, that Google has made, you just tap um, creations. And in here, I can see, for example, here's you know another GIF that it made. Uh, one of the neat subtle things is it actually stabilizes uh, recurring information. So even though there was uh, almost certainly some movement in my camera uh, in this particular picture, uh, it was smart enough to actually lock that down and you can see just the kid in the water uh, moving. Uh, similarly, if you want to find things you know, just from Google Drive or if you want to find just your videos, um, Search has these really nice shortcuts and again you can get those on um, the mobile apps as well as the web app. Um, I also wanted to touch on something that Aravind and I in particular worked on that I'm, I'm kind of proud of, which is um, the editor that's built in. And so um, here's a, a picture of my friend uh, Bruce um, that uh, I took a couple of years ago. And so as I mentioned, you know, we've got all this amazing technology from uh, Nick software, uh, other things developed within Google, but we recognize that, you know, there are different users with different needs. You know, guys like us really love Snapseed, but that might really be overwhelming to somebody like my wife who really just wants to come in and be able to like, you know, crop, uh, make it brighter, maybe add a filter and, you know, be done in a matter of seconds. And so we really uh, rethought the editing experience inside of Google Photos and we created a, a new editor that works on iOS, Android and web. So I'll show you today the web version. Uh, to get at it, I just went ahead and uh, click this pencil icon. Um, so um, if I go and tap auto and then I press and hold, you can see literally with one tap, uh, it did a lot of smart things. So um, one of the subtle things is um, we have a vignette control, but it actually um, centers based on people's faces. So we figure that um, more often than not, people are trying to draw attention to a person uh, or people in a photograph. And so in this case, uh, you'll notice if I really, I'll, I'll exaggerate this just for demo, um, the vignette is actually centered on Bruce as opposed to sort of naively in the center of the photo. And those are the kind of things that you start to be able to do once you actually build in some computer vision uh, into the system. Uh, similarly, uh, with the light slider, um, you can see it's uh, affecting the different regions of the image separately. Um, so, you know, as I crank this up, it's not blowing out the highlights out here. So that's one of the reasons we call it light and not something uh, simple like brightness, um, you know, which would be just a, one of the components within um, uh, the slider. Uh, also, I think it'll probably be too hard to see um, over the, the video connection, but I would encourage people to try this on their own. So there's a slider called pop, which adds some really nice mid-tone contrast. Uh, if I crank it down, hopefully you can see that was the original image. Um, but what's sort of interesting and subtle about this is once I go beyond about the halfway point, uh, you'll see Bruce's face doesn't change, but the other things in the image do. And that's an example where we're using actually face recognition or, or face um, detection technology to say, hey, you know what, I probably want to treat this part of the image separately. And so we're really trying to make a very, very streamlined, simple to use editor that can actually think a little bit more like a photographer would and try to draw, you know, um, pardon me, try to draw attention to the really significant parts of the image uh, and not overdo effects that might, um, might cause a, uh, you know, undesirable uh, outcome. Um, the rest of it is really, really simple. Um, so I can go in and, uh, of course, I can crop and I can rotate and straighten my image. Um, one thing that's kind of neat about web software, uh, this is just a, a very subtle point, but um, we added these uh, little uh, draggable rotation corners just the other day. And that's the kind of thing that, you know, if you're in a, a world of, you know, traditional desktop apps, it's much harder. You actually have to push out an update. Um, but that was one of the things that the team just added, and it just kind of slipstreams in. So um, the nature of, of apps like this is just continuous improvement based on the feedback that we get. Um, so again, you know, 
this was something where literally if I had simply come in and done one tap on auto, I'd get a result which you know I find much more pleasing. Uh, and then when I save it, uh, all of those effects are written non-destructively. And so my original data is always preserved, but at any point if I were to hit the pencil icon here or if I were to go to my iPhone and tap it, um, I could go back, all the sliders are exactly where I left them, and all of my original uh, image data is there as well. In fact, if I want to, I can even save um, a copy. Um, so if I, you know, I want to keep both copies visible, um, that's very easy to do. Um, so, Arvin, is there anything um, I, I may have skipped that you think we should show? Uh, no, just in the, I mean, the, the, the main goal with, with building the editor for Google Photos is we wanted to build something where with just a couple of taps, uh, you can get your photo looking a bit better than where it is today and ready to share and ready to go out. Uh, like, like I said before, I'm, you know, I'm an enthusiast photographer. I'm a professional photographer as well. There's a lot of uh, photographs that I take that I want to take into uh, Photoshop or Lightroom and spend a lot of time working on, and I do that. But then there's a lot of other stuff where, you know, I'm just in the moment and I just want to snap that photo and I want to, you know, just make it look a little bit better. And then I want to, you know, I want to uh, SMS it to my wife or I want to post it on Facebook or you know, do whatever. And so that's what really the Google Photo Editor is about. Um, John showed you the um, the sliders and uh, we also have a set of, uh, of looks, a set of filters. So um, we purposefully chose a set of looks that are a bit more, um, a bit more tasteful, a bit more muted. They're not like, uh, wild, uh, crazy color uh, types of filters, um, and they're also just another example of of something something you can do with just a single click or a couple of clicks and get your photo to a better place. Mm -hmm. Now, what is your solution if you do want to take photos to Lightroom? Is there a way to easily get them out of here? Do they come out with the edits you've made? Ah, uh, good, good questions. Let me um, show you something. Which this is a, a subtle feature, but it's one of my favorite ones. Um, again, I. I caution people uh, who, who love photography from hanging out with our event if they don't uh, want to get kind of shown up. So it, by coincidence, um, each of our families was, was on vacation in San Diego last week. So let me show you um, some, yeah, I took a bunch of photos at the zoo, for example, if I were to type in, you know, like I did lion, you saw what I took. Well, of course I know Arvin's going to take some amazing stuff. And um, let me bring up a link that he uh, shared with me of... Um, uh, some some amazing photos of these creatures. So, oh, that's um, really neat. So you can he can just give you a link and you you can see his photos on Google Photos. Yeah, not only that, which you're exactly right. Um, and and to do that, literally, all he had to do was just you know select a bunch. In fact, I can shift click these if I want, um, and then he could um, uh, grab a link. But um, uh, in addition, there's this little uh, download uh, or add to library. So it's a little cloud with a little down arrow on it. So if I go ahead and tap that. Now, everything that he shared with me is going to be added to my Google Photos library. Um, so this is, you know, this works really great. We, um, uh, I, I went camping uh, with my family and a bunch of other families a couple of weeks ago. I was able to take like 300 raw files that I had ingested just via that automated uploader, um, simply just shift click those, share the link with uh, our friends, and then if they uh, are logged in with their Google account, they can simply add those. Or even if they're not, they can just press a button and it'll download uh, really as just one big zip file. So it's an incredibly easy way uh, for people to share things without having to deal with, you know, um, email and, and, you know, big attachment sizes and everything like that. So, so if, if they were raw files and your friend downloaded them, would they get raw files or JPEGs? I think they just get JPEGs. Is that correct, Arvin? Uh, yeah, that's right. Right, right. Um, Oh, let me, before I forget, too, um, just a couple other things to point out. Um, so I mentioned, you know, that we uh, automatically create these, uh, these GIF animations. In fact, my kids are funny because they're uh, six and seven years old, and, and they say, can you take at least five photos? Because I want to get a GIF. So they're, they're getting kind of savvy. Um, but in addition, uh, we, we make some other really interesting visual summaries. So, for example, uh, for my trip, uh, Google made me a story. Uh, so if I go back just for a moment to uh, my collections view... And uh, I go in here. I will see actually. Um, so stories takes uh, highlights. Uh, let me actually just. There's another little uh, trick you can do. So there's a little drop down menu, and if you want to see just the stories that have been made, here's one called Lego Land and Beyond. Now I didn't have to do anything to make this. I didn't have to you know hand curate my photos. Uh, really, the only thing I did I think was add the um, the title because it just took the um, 
the geographical information as the default. So here's a selfie of uh, me and my son with a giant Emmett from the Lego movie. Um, and if I click here, um, hopefully this will all come through on the screen share. It does. Um, it, it puts in some really cool augmentations like the geographic information. So it's like, oh, okay. So you guys went, uh, you know, here's a rest stop, took some photos. You know, I don't claim that these are, are high art or anything, but it was just, you know, uh, us as we went. And so really it's, it's doing a lot of the curation tasks and, um, uh, you know, some of the augmentation uh, that I might want to do automatically, but making that really um, simple. Um, and then another thing, uh, a feature that I worked very heavily on is uh, movies. So I'm going to just, um, and I'm not sure if this will come through just because it's video playing over video conference, but um, Google had a uh, take your kids to work day. Uh, sorry, just pause that for a second. Uh, take your kid to work day uh, a couple months ago. Um, we brought in the kids. I shot a bunch of photos and videos. And then just by selecting those and choosing uh, the plus sign and then movie, I was able to make this, uh, this quick movie. So, you know, te teaching my kids essential life skills, like breaking stuff down in front of the whiteboard. and That's a little scary. How old is he? He's seven. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, so definite, definite mini-me's. Um, but, yeah, I mean, those are, like, like we were saying, I think, you know, even you, you could be the most serious photographer, uh, but being able to bring your moments to life, I think, is something that resonates pretty universally, and it's incredibly simple to do. Either we'll automatically suggest these things, uh, in which case um, you have the option to either save them to your library or say no thanks, uh, or anytime you want, you can just um, select a bunch of things and make them yourself. Great. That all looks so fun. And I do think there's something here for everybody. You were talking about, you know, having these automatic creations made for you, and on the other hand, being able to upload your raw files if you're a serious photographer. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I think that's great, and I hope that you will be able to serve all those communities as you go forward. Um, I do. I have a couple of questions. Would that be sure. okay if I ask? Um, and it's okay if you don't have an answer <laughs> for me. Sure. Um, I think that you know, from the consumer standpoint, um, one thing that people are struggle with a lot is which option do I choose for uploading? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand that you can choose a free, unlimited upload option. Um, or you can choose to uh, buy a certain amount of storage. I think you get 15 gigabytes for free, and then you can increase the amount of space you have if you pay extra. So, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm going, all right, well, I've got a bunch of photos on my phone, and I really would love just the unlimited option for those. Because mm -hmm. I really, you know, those are just family photos or whatever. I don't care about them as much as I care about my raw photos. Mm -hmm. And so, but on the other hand, I have terabytes of raw photos. So I don't know if I could afford to pay for all the space to upload and store them all. What, how, what would you suggest for somebody in that situation? What do they well, choose? It's a great question. In fact, I, I shouldn't have turned off my screen share. If you bear with me one second, I do want to show you just the, what does compression really mean? Because I think this is a really important question, and these are some nice samples from our event. So um, give me one second. I'll share right. again. And while you do that, you know, th my understanding is that uh, you, the things that are greater than 16 megapixels um, or video photos greater than 16 megapixels get compressed. And y you explain it. You're better than I am. Okay. All right. So, um, so yeah, if you have uh, images up to 16 megapixels, uh, we will preserve um, the original resolution. And, um, th and by the way, so the there are two options. One is original, which is truly original bytes. Literally exactly what you gave us is what you get back. The other uh, is what we call high quality, and that's where the, um, the compression, 16 megapixel, etc. come in. So um, in that case, um, if it's uh, 16 meg megapixels or less, it uh, keeps the original resolution. It applies some uh, compression, but hopefully you can see this on the screen. Um, here are um, Arvin's kids. You zoom in, you know, even to 4x, and if we didn't have these labels here, original or high quality, I would challenge just about anybody to spot any differences. So, uh, you know, to me, this is just a, a nice benefit of Google having so much uh, cloud processing infrastructure. You know, we can apply much more um, sophisticated, um, powerful algorithms uh, in the cloud than your phone can do, you know, when it has to do it in just a, a fraction of a second with really low battery usage. And so, um, you know, visually, I feel completely confident, you know, my, I, I love taking stuff with my iPhone, it's an 8 megapixel sensor, 
I can back up everything and know that I can store that for free, it's going to be the original resolution, and visually the quality difference uh, due to the compression is going to be negligible. Um, now, in a case like yours where you've got raw files, uh, the desktop uploader gives you a, a, a choice, actually, uh, if I can pull this up for a moment. Um, so under the preferences, you can choose either uh, high quality or you can choose original, and then it really will do the original bytes, and there's the additional option, do you want to upload raw files? So as you say, you get 15 gigs of storage for free. Um, that's shared amongst all your Google services, so it includes Gmail, etc. cetera. Um, but if you want to add more storage, it's really, really affordable. So you can get 100 gigs uh, for two bucks a month, which is pretty amazing. If you want 1,000 gigs, which is, of course, a terabyte, that's 10 bucks a month. So it's literally, you know, 10 cents per gig uh, per month. So it's true, you know, if you have a, a truly huge um, archive, it, you know, it could add up. But I think for most people, most of the time, um, they'll find those options pretty, uh, pretty doable. I think so too, but I, I just want to put in a little plug, you know, for people like me and many of the photographers that I've met on Google Plus, they do have more than a terabyte of photos, many of which are raw, some are not, and they're looking for a permanent solution for everything. It'd be great if you added maybe one more level in there that was, um, you know, that didn't get so expensive that it was prohibitive for many people. Anyway, I'll just ask. No, it's, th thanks, it's, a, it's good feedback, and as always, um, you know, we're always listening, so I appreciate that. Cool. Well, I'm glad you explained that. Now, this compression that gets uh, put to photos that are smaller than 16 megapixels, um, it, it's still you, you're pretty confident that people aren't going to notice that. It's not really visible, as we can see in your example. Yeah, that like I say, it's it's really. I mean, Arvin maybe could speak more to the the technical aspects, but it's really advanced compression. Um, you know, JPEG itself is a pretty old standard, and being able to do more sophisticated things in the cloud, I think, really helps us achieve. Um, big size savings in a way that isn't going to um, in any way, you know, affect your visual quality. Yeah, and, and the thing, what I would encourage people to do is uh, just go try it out. Um, this is actually really yeah. easy. You can go sign up for, you know, for a Google Photos account. It's free. Um, go in, um, set the, um, the quality, the high quality, upload a bunch of photos, and take a look. And I think uh, if folks do that, you'll really see that high quality really is high quality. And you know, as a place where it's going to be backed up and it's safely all there, um, it's it's certainly better than nothing as a backup solution. Oh, it is. It really is. Now, um, I have another backup type of question about uh, the phone. So I'm shooting and shooting on my phone, and let's say I have a phone that has a, an iPhone with 64 uh, gigabytes on, and then at some point everything is going to get full. Um, so. As I'm shooting, I, can I get things to automatically upload and, and be backed up to Google Photos, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. But then, even so, at some point my phone is full. Now what do I do? So if you're on, so today with Google Photos, if you're on original, and it's the originals that are being backed up, um, as you run low on storage on your phone, you'll get a card in the assistant um, that'll say, you know, it looks like you're running out of, uh, out of space on your phone. There's this many photos that have been safely backed up, would you like me to delete these you know, off your phone, saving this many megs of space? And all you have to do is, is tap yes on that, and that'll go off and it'll free up that space for you. Uh, we do this with um, um, only with original um, today, and it's just it's something that we're rolling out. And this works on Android phones and iOS. That's right, both Android and iOS. Because mm -hmm. I was, I was uh, telling John, I think in an email that I tried that I, um, you know, I op I made a second account and I had it on original and you know you get 15 gigabytes free, so I uploaded 14.99, then 15, then 15.1, and I never got that message. <laughs> oh, so that's actually you're looking at the um, the the 15 gigabytes free, which is separate from the amount of space that's available on your phone. So we, we actually generate this card only when you're running low on space on your phone. Oh, um, okay. If you're actually filling up your, your 15 gigs or whatever the amount of space that you have, as it fills up, um, there's a separate, you'll get an email uh, from Google that says, hey, uh, you know, you're, you're running low on space. You should probably do something about it. But that, you know, you won't get anything in photos itself because all of your storage is all unified. It's unified across Gmail, Drive, Photos, you know, all of the Google products. Oh, that totally makes sense. Go ahead, John. Oh, sure. And one just um, small thing, because people sometimes ask, they say, like, well, if I stick something in Drive, like if I have a Google Drive folder on my, on my Mac and I put something in there, um, 
what is the impact on the storage? And to keep it really simple, anything you put in drive counts against your quota. So um, it could be 100 kilobytes. It's still going to um, go against that 15 gigs or whatever amount of, of storage you uh, buy. Whereas if you upload things to photos, either you know via mobile app, the web uploader, or the desktop uh, upload agent, um, that's all governed by this you know high quality versus original policy. So in that case, um, you know if you choose high quality, then um, none of that will count against your quota. Oh, I see. Now, with regard to Google Drive, um, I sort of, uh, I think I got a message somewhere along the way that says, hey, do you want to have your photos on Google Drive too, and that it will not count against your quota if they are Google Photos also, right? So yeah. you can have them in both places. But then I couldn't figure out why would I want them on Google Drive? What's the purpose? So there's a, I think the most immediate purpose is um, with, with how wonderfully easy auto backup is to use on your phone. Uh, where all of your photos can easily get auto-backed up. If you want those same photos to just easily show up so that they're accessible on your laptop or on your desktop, Drive is a great place to do it because if you turn that option on, you can take a bunch of photos on you know, your Android phone or your iPhone and go to your, um, your desktop, your MacBook, and you can go to your Drive folder and those photos will automatically be there. So, and then you can use it in other things that you want to use in, like you, maybe you want to pull it into Photoshop or maybe you want to do something else with it. Um, you can use it easily. Got it. So it's so you don't have to go through downloading off of Google Photos if you also have chosen to put your food, photos in Google Drive. And am I right then it doesn't count against your, co your quota twice? That's right. It definitely does not count against your quota twice. Fantastic. Right. And I, I, I would add, Sorry, there are, right, so there's actually two separate settings. One is, do you want photos that you put into Drive to appear within the Google Photos interface? Um, and so you can switch that on. That's uh, within Photos itself. And then the other, within Drive, is do you want the photos that you've uploaded via Photos to appear in Drive? So it's a, you know, it, it takes a little bit of explaining. Um, the only point of caution I would say is um, if you're using the desktop uploader, uh, to pull, which is a, really an uploader as opposed to a sync agent. It, let's say you're pulling a bunch of stuff from your Mac, like you put a JPEG on your desktop. Um, it'll pull that up. If you additionally turn on the, um, show the show my Google Photos content in Drive, it will then download a separate copy into your Drive folder. But again, you would only get into that case if you deliberately went and, and turned on both options. And you know, it may be something that you want, it's just something to be aware of uh, if you flip those switches. Well, thank you for explaining it. That's where things get a little, you know, what we started out talking about, simplicity. And, you know, when you really get into this, and it, it can get a little complicated, but I think there also is a way to use these great products where you don't have to get this complicated, doing the sort of workflow that John was showing us at the beginning. Yeah, I think for most people, I mean, what's what's really nice, you know, to me, I before um, Google Photos launched, it, to me, it got really sort of laborious to try to, you know, be around a campfire and explaining to people, like, well, is it free? Is it unlimited? And like, well, okay, for you, effectively, and, and there was, like, this 2048 thing, and it's like, all that is, you don't have to talk about it. It's like, you know, for, uh, you know, 99% of phones, I would guess, um, you know, it's 16 megapixels and under is what they're capturing. All that stuff is going to be backed up. All of that is going to be free. Uh, people don't have to worry about it. And that was really one of the core um, goals with the product was to give people the peace of mind of having, you know, one secure place where they could back up all their lifetime of memories, not have to worry about it. And so, um, by by offering that option, I think it is a lot simpler um, and and certainly very affordable. I mean, how do you beat zero? Uh, than it ever has been in the past. It is. And, you know, I really looked closely at all my options, iCloud and uh, Flickr and uh, an Amazon Drive, and finally Google Photos came along. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that solves the problem, at least with respect to my iPhone, because that thing is constantly backing up to Google Photos. I know I have a safe copy, and now I find out that it's even going to tell me when my phone is getting full so I can safely delete uh, photos from my phone and know that I still have them automatically up there um, on Google servers. And my gosh, it's free, as you say. So thank you so much for putting this into place, guys. It's terrific. Cool. Thank you. I'm yeah. Glad to hear it. Thank and you. thank you so much for coming here today and explaining it to us and for answering my questions. I appreciate it. Now, is there anything else that you wanted to share with people before we go? Uh, I mean, like I say, you know, we're what's exciting here is really this is uh, even though the, the team has been working on, you know, towards this goal for a long time, it's it's much more of a beginning than an ending. And so I think you're only going to see more interesting things coming out, especially, um, you know, we all told ourselves, as, you know, 
uh, as soon as this thing gets in the wild, we'll, we'll hear a ton of requests, and, and uh, so we are. Um, so, I, you know, I just tweeted um, a link where you can very easily supply feedback, you know, via the, the mobile apps, via the website. Uh, you can tweet at us, you can, you know, however you want to do it. Uh, janeac.com slash blog is my website, and I post um, tips and tricks anytime, uh, you know, it, it seems interesting. Um, and so, yeah, I would just really encourage folks to let us know what they like, uh, anything that's confusing, anything they don't like, um, and, and that will really help guide the team towards um, where we go next. That's great. And that link to, for feedback to the team is, are you going to put that on your blog as well? I love your blog, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I tweeted it or blogged it at, um, maybe six weeks ago, but uh, um, I can definitely, if you have show notes or anything, um, I'll make sure that you've got a copy of the link. Why don't you just say it now, and then we'll, we'll it'll automatically oh. get in the show notes. Oh, what is it? Uh, hang on. Um, oh, sorry to put you on this one. But while you're looking that up, um, Arvin, you have a personal website where you have some great photos. Could you tell us the URL for that so people can see your photos? Uh, sure thing, yeah. My personal website is uh, akimagery.com. Uh, great. So I have all my photographs there. And, well, and so, sorry to, to answer your question, Jen. So um, if you're on a, uh, a computer, uh, you know, just go to photos.google.com, uh, and in the left-hand uh, navigation area, you know, where you, you find the assistant in your collections, etc., um, there's a feedback button. Um, and similarly, uh, I believe it's in the same location on the mobile apps as well. So we try to organize everything in that sort of left-hand panel, and whether you're mobile or desktop, um, that's a really easy way to send feedback. Well, it's great to know that you guys are listening to feedback and that you welcome it and that you don't see it as criticism because it's not meant that way, I'm sure. People love Google and they love photography and it's just the perfect marriage. Well, thank you. And, you know, it's, uh, I, I used to joke on, on Photoshop with the team, I swear because I care. And so, you know, if, if people are, are passionate, if they've got a lot to say, we, we treat that as a gift. And, um, you know, we're always, uh, we're always eager to hear uh, what's, uh, what's on folks' minds. Well, great. I really enjoyed talking to you, John Knack, and you, Arvind Krishnaswamy. And I want to thank everybody who's been listening or watching to this episode of of TWIP The Fix and remind you that if you like what you saw here, um, you can catch more episodes at thisweekinphoto.com. We have fantastic guests every week. And if you're listening on iTunes and you like what you heard, I'd really appreciate it if you gave us a nice review. So thanks a lot, guys. Say goodbye. Thanks, Jen. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks. Good night.